Hi there, Chef Community. It's Rochelle here. I've decided to come on here and give a little bit of an update and overview of a Zoom call that we did a few weeks ago now. Um, I was having some tech dif difficulties and I couldn't record in the session, so I recorded on my phone, but it was like a terrible video. It was late at night and super dark. So I thought that I would come on here and just give the Coles notes. We'll be doing these uh, types of calls more frequently. I'm hoping once a month with a targeted topic, some community-based getting chefs together and learning and um, finding out about one another. And some will be more educational with certain topics at hand. So this video in particular is about some updates that we've had in our business since the course was originally filmed. They are more overarching things that I wanted to address. We've really seen business change um, in the last four years. Some of that due to COVID, some of that due to inflation, financial times, things like that going on. So uh, I just wanted to take a second and um, go over those points. So the first thing that I wanted to mention is one of the things that we have been doing consistently, mostly from client requests and consumer demand, is that we started to offer a smaller service. So in the course, we talk about a full service and a half service. At the time of filming and all of the years before that, Beyond Nourish only provided full services for clients. And this essentially was one chef working for one client and providing pretty much the majority of their food for the week, the client's food. And we would get on the phone with them and we would say, what would be the formula that you would want in order to feel like all of your food dreams are coming true? And so the client would tell us a combination of breakfast, lunches, and dinners, or maybe it was just dinners, or maybe it was just lunches, whatever it was that they were seeking that took us roughly six hours to cook, an hour to um, shop and set up, and then also an hour on the back end to uh, deliver and clean up. So, you know, a, a good eight hour day. And the price point of that was, you know, significant, somewhere between $400 and $500 uh, just in labor. And so, We've evolved a lot since then. People, I think, are spending more consciously um, and they're just having to pay more attention to where their dollars are going. And so we now have been moving into a place of offering um, not even just half services, but what we've uh, now called mini services. We are now doing smaller services for clients at a lower price point. Um, and this has allowed us to really appeal to more people. Uh, our clientele demographic is very similar. I would say that it maybe has changed a little bit over the years. Um, we used to tend to cater to maybe more people with illness and um, elderly people. Th those were quite a few of our like regular clients. Whereas now I would say the majority of people coming to get our service are just busy, young, professional people with small children, um, families, or uh, couples. Some singles, uh, we definitely uh, now have some packages that are um, appealing to them, um, which is great, but the best bang for your buck um, and the easiest sell is a couple with some small children that they can feed as well. So explore possibly giving an offering. If you're having trouble finding clients, if people are making comments about the cost of your service, it might be time to explore offering something that is at a lower price point, whatever that might look like for you, whether it be just your hours packaged or a particular formula or meals that are all packaged together, however that might look for uh, your current business. The other thing that I wanted to mention was that we, since the filming of the course, have uh, decided to go with more strategic and um, structured packages for clients. We are trying to streamline as much as we can because when uh, we used to just be two full-time chefs within Beyond Nourish, they would cook for eight people per week and that was like a full-time 
you know, 40 plus hours. Oftentimes they're billing out 60, uh, 50 hours a week. Now chefs are cooking for anywhere um, between like eight and 10 clients a week uh, because we are doing these smaller services. Uh, so we were looking just for a way to streamline things from an admin standpoint and allow clients to, or potential clients to just identify what would best suit them rather than having to get on the phone with them and talk to them. Even though I really loved this side of my business uh, initially, it did take a lot of time. And I find this day and age, people are just not as keen to get on the phone and have a conversation. There tends to be a lot of um, buildup around like when to call and it's just not the way that we do business that much anymore. So um, on our website, you can actually, once you fill out the contact us form, you will get redirected to a page that lists all of our packages and all of our pricing. So you can only receive that information if you actually go through the contact us page, which is a few basic questions that allow us to decide if we have room for you and if you are a suitable client for us. Um, and they can already wrap their heads around what the cost might be and any packages um, that uh, suit them. From there, we follow up with emails and, and so on and so forth. But developing these types of packaging, attaching certain pricings to them has really helped um, improve the systems of our admin sign and just get clients uh, signed up faster and quicker. It also allows people to be weeded out a lot faster. Like if pricing is an issue for them, you don't wanna to have to have spent multiple emails or time on the phone to eventually just hear from them that like the price of your service was way out of their budget and um, they didn't want to spend that much money. So you might as well find out that information and that's why not that I feel like you need to have it blatantly on your website exactly how much your services cost or your um, package costs, but having it somewhere uh, in there uh, toward the beginning of the onboarding process is really important. Something else that has changed, number three, <laughs> that has changed within Beyond Nourish is we used to bill on a monthly cycle. This also helped keep our admin costs um, on the lower side. It was just a lot less headache. Uh, it made things very easy. And, um, you know, we were able to put everything in a Google calendar and every fourth service we would um, re-invoice that client because they pay in advance. We've had to change this uh, for a number of reasons. One, it has improved our cash flow. So in, we now bill on a weekly basis to our clients and we bill on a daily basis within the, um, in, within the company structure. So every day we have money going through um, and then the clients are just receiving a weekly uh, invoice and bill. One other thing that we've done is we've taken out manually um, allowing people to, or not manually, but yeah, I suppose manually allowing people to pay the invoice after. We were just dealing with too many people that were letting it slide and um, weren't paying on time. So we set up a payment link through Stripe that even though we do pay a slightly higher cost, we capture the client's credit card and we run it through manually 24 hours within their service is complete. And, you know, we do have to pay fees on that. If you're a small business and you intend to have like from one to five clients, I would highly recommend that you continue to take e-transfer as long as you can to avoid any credit card processing fees. Um, but this just wasn't working for us as our business was growing. It, it became important that we automated our service. Um, and so even though our admin team does input them manually every day, at least we have the, um, the security of knowing that we're going to get paid. And it does bring up the fact that we don't have a backup plan of what happens if a credit card um, is declined and what we do with, with the client service that day. Um, but it also allows us not to have to uh, bill two invoices. Um, so a lot of you know that we used to do a, a grocery budget and then we would do an actual grocery cost adjusted on the second invoice. Well, now we are doing it just one invoice and one credit card payment. Um, they're not adjusted, they're just ran through in real time. If you're somebody in the course that's at the beginning stages, you haven't entered module like 
three onward, um, just know, go back to this uh, video. It will make a lot of sense um, when you kind of get into things. Um, another thing that we've noticed is just clients in general are needing a lot more flexibility. So we ran on a system that it was, if you were signing up for a Monday service, Monday was your day. If you canceled on us or you paused your service, we would replace you and there was no guarantee that Monday would be available again. It's like a weird thing to deal with people's away schedules when you're trying to build a bus business of this um, style. Um, totally doable, but it's just something to note that since COVID, we've noticed that a lot of clients want a lot of more ebb and flow. They also um, are a little bit more commitment phobe, I would say. Um, and I don't have this necessarily figured out. I just wanted to update you from a consumer side of what we're seeing a lot of on our end. Um, the way that we found to mitigate this with trying to keep um, our staff schedule as consistent as possible is just having to build out more volume within our clients. So that means having more people interested in our service and kind of having a bit of a wait list. But I warn you, wait lists are a little bit like, you know, a wait list is not like a firm wait list of they're going to say yes the second that you tell them that you have a spot available. It's such a timing um, thing. They perhaps may have already moved on to another service and they don't, you know, they don't even remember that you're on their wait list. Uh, or they're on your wait list. So you really have to decide how you want to handle that. Um, or, or another thing that you could exercise is um, setting up specific uh, containers with clients and hold that container very sacred in the time that you're working together and start with something small, you know, ask a client to commit to four weeks at a certain price. Um, if they want to sign up for more, perhaps they get a, a reduced uh, rate for that. And find an incentive for them to sign up with you longer term. Another idea that I had recently that we haven't implemented but I thought might work um, is that if you have a client that's really interested in like a long term transformation or um, service, that you would treat it like you would a gym membership where it's like you pay every week regardless but you're granted 12 weeks in the the calendar year that you're allowed to take off and pause your service with no penalty. I thought that that was like a really good model that we could perhaps um, bring into this style uh, of work as well. Another option with the flexibility part of things, because it might be that you're the one requiring flexibility, would be to give your clients just an availability sheet and that they could book in ahead of time. You could say that you're booking out, um, you know, X amount of days or weeks and they would just book in with you and you would have a full calendar. Maybe your Monday clients change every week, maybe they stay the same, but you would just have a full calendar a couple of weeks out. Um, I kind of like that way of doing things too. The last update that I have, um, as I mentioned, this is like the Coles Notes condensed version. If you have questions, please just post them in the community chat. We're really trying to um, get this community more active as um, you know, we have over 100 students in here as we build uh, this course. We really want to see more people asking questions in here. I'm in this, um, this zone a lot. My eyes are on it. Um, so please don't hesitate to ask anything within it. I learned, uh, for those of you that aren't involved in, uh, in the Beyond Nourished newsletter, I highly recommend it. I speak to a lot of um, pains and um, interests of, you know, chefs getting their businesses off the ground. Um, I do business insights every single week and also give you uh, a very personal look within Beyond Nourished and my experience in running it. Uh, you can go to like subscribe, Beyond Nourished backslash subscribe, I believe it is, or at the bottom of our homepage. Anyways, I uh, spoke about something in there recently that cost me a ton of money, only to find out that multiple other um, colleagues of mine have also been hit with this recently. And I'm just telling you, because it is not something that we covered in the course, but I will be adding um, some content around this. 
This is particular to British Columbia, which is where we live, but this type of insurance goes across uh, all, all different province, um, provinces and states. Um, and worldwide, I'm not sure exactly the regulations, but I'm, I'm telling you because it's something that you need to look into in uh, the area that you are running your business. And that is what we call in BC, um, is WorkSafe BC. It's basically an um, insurance necessary for an employer to have um, if you are subcontracting or having contractors work for you or you have employees working for you, but that you also need to have for yourself, which is like so crazy and wild to me. Anyways, I'm not going to talk about all the particularities of it. I am bringing this up just to plant a seed that is something that you might want to consider, maybe less so if like risk wise, if it's just you, but the second that you have somebody working for you, even in a subcontractor type of way, meaning they're not your employee, you've just hired them to do some work for you. Maybe you're catering an event and you want a hand with things. This is something that you need to consider looking into. Now, previous me who haven't who hadn't been through this experience um i would have said like it's not necessarily a top of mind thing and it may not have been when it was just me or just me and uh you know an assistant but it really should have been especially when i started to work with others i didn't know that this was mandatory it is actually illegal in um british columbia not to have this type of insurance it's something that you need to pay into monthly um, and as a result, I have to, had to back pay three years of payroll expenses, which equaled almost close to $10,000. So I'm, you know, if you feel like you're like out of the woodwork, you've been running a business and like nothing's happened, that's fine. Yeah, that's great. Except for they work with the CRA, which is the Canadian Revenue Agency in America. It's the IRS. And if you, um, are not registered within the insurable um, governing body within your province or state, you will be held liable for the past three years of whatever it is that you contracted out um, to people or that you had as payroll. So don't think that you can slide under the radar. Um, these, these bodies are working much closer with the CRA so they know exactly who you are and how to find you. Um, and it is something, yeah, from, from like a smart business standpoint that I should have been aware of earlier. Um, however, I just didn't know it was mandatory. I, I have extensive insurance coverage. Otherwise, I just didn't know that there was a particular one for employers and their employees and contractors. Anyways, lesson learned. I hope that this helps you, doesn't overwhelm you in any way. Like I said, um, these are updates now here in 2024, just simple things that we're seeing within the demographic of running our business at the caliber that it's at, but it's also very relatable for um, your small business and just getting it off of the ground. So thanks for taking time to watch this video and I very much look forward to getting into more dynamic conversations within this uh, community and uh, getting to know all of you a little bit better. So have a wonderful night and uh, we'll talk to you soon.